All right, Lakesiders. Merry Christmas, Lakesiders. Come on in. No, no, they're all fellowshipping and enjoying themselves. I'll put an end to that. <laughs> I've got two guys running interference for me after my second joke. You, you may have to be a third. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you have your leg in your window? Uh, no, no, not yet. I, I didn't think about it actually. I want to get a big one, but they're 200. Emergency tour of home is necessary. Yeah. All right, Lake Siders. Get some delicious coffee. If there's anything left after Tom got through with his second giant cup. All right. They can hear me whistling on the World Wide Web. All right. There's a lot of people here today. That's good. I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm happy incited. What do you think, Dave? Just give up? Should I just give up? No? Yeah, it's okay. All right, we got to get started here. So in case y'all didn't know, I had to get an extra job this year for Christmas. We got 10 grandkids, and Karen has an Amazon button finger. So I got an extra job. I became a massage therapist. Yeah, it's true. But Rupert, I got fired. Apparently, I rub people the wrong way. <laughs> All right. That was a joke. I really don't have a second job, or a first job for that matter, yet, yes. All right. Thank you all last, uh, for last week. Y'all came to the, to the choir program in droves. We had, in the two performances, we had 626 people, which was amazing. 300 and something the first uh, performance 350 or something like that. It was great. Three what? 371. Yeah, 371, which is amazing. Yes. So we got extra nervous the first performance. We were we were locked in that second performance. So thank you all for coming to that. We had a great time doing it. Thank you. Incredible performance. We enjoyed doing it. I promise you. Except for Mark. All right. Monday's dinner also, we had a great time. There was 160-something, maybe 165, and everybody showed up because all the name tags were gone, and it was great. We had a good time. We sang carols. We ate dinner, fellowshipped. Great, greatness. And we announced people that were the, in their officer positions and stuff like that. One person we forgot, where is he? Is he here? 
He's not even here to accept his congratulations. James Baden, of course, does our newsletter for us every month. Does a great job, researches, and gets all the information that, for those newsletters and keeps us informed. So next time you see James, y'all thank him for doing all that work because it's every month. Uh, we also collected for Bill uh, Kirkpatrick last week. We collected $468, and he was, he was very excited. I took a picture of him. I don't have it. It's on my phone. I don't know. He gave his usual pose, so just think about his usual pose, and that's him. All right. Treats today. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Did y'all get some? Kathy Organ, Mary Moss, Hillary Short were in charge of that. And most importantly, Joan Waters. Where's Terry? <laughs> Terry? Yeah. Joan says, don't let Kathy show me up. So that, Joan is most important. Joan Waters. See, y'all remember that when you see her. She's doing the kid thing today the, in the nursery area, or the children's area, excuse me. Hey, birthday's today. Birthday day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's one today. But it's Pat Campers. Where's Pat? She's not here today? I can't sing happy birthday then. Y'all lucked out. She's celebrating, yes. So Pat Camper's birthday is today. If you see her, tell her happy birthday. And I'm going to list a bunch of them today because we're not meeting the next two Sundays for Sunday school. So Sandra McRoberts, Sandy McRoberts, 1221. Bonnie Skank is 1223, almost a Christmas baby. Oh, it's 1226? Okay, I, that was my error then. 1226 because that's on the same day. As Omer Adams, 1226. Judy Dumas. Where's Judy? Judy, 1226. I think there's another one. Linda Sutton, maybe? 1226? That was a that was a special day, wasn't it? 1226? That's good. Scotty Withrow is gonna be 95. He is on 1229. John Bledsoe's gonna be a hundred. 1230. December 30th. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> when you get to a certain age, it's a celebration. You know. Yes, we're celebrating. John's not really 100. He acts like he's like 50. If you ever seen him in the yard and working on the cars and working on the house, he works hard. Uh, and Jane makes him. So, uh, Cheryl Harvey's birthday. She is a New Year's baby. Where is Cheryl? Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl Harvey. Cheryl. Getting ready to get married. Yeah, yeah. She's a New Year's baby. Doug Shepard, January 4th is your birthday. Good. Happy birthday. And Chuck Hudlow, the magic man back there, the 5th of January. So y'all wish those people happy birthday if you see them in the next couple of weeks. Mm, all right. Because as I said, there's no Sunday school next week. It's going to be a Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. here in the sanctuary. So be prepared for that. It's going to be a great, great time. Uh, anniversaries. David and Suzanne Stubblefield. December 27th. What number is that? 65. 65 big ones. Woohoo! <laughs> Their marriage can now apply for Medicare. <laughs> Thank you. And you know who else's anniversary is this month? Bill and Linda Sutton. N New Year's Eve New Year's anniversary. Year. That's cool. Yeah. Birthday anniversary, the same. Well, I don't know. How many is it for y'all? Anniversary. 30? 30. 30. Oh, my gosh. Very good. All right. Uh, and Bob and Sharon Curtis, if y'all been following Facebook, they're at another concert. Eric Wind and Fire or Jackson Brown or Rolling Stones. or Y'all wish them happy anniversary. It's the 3rd of January. 3rd of January. I don't have any new members today unless somebody grabbed one and signed them up. So we won't do that. But visitor today, we have Anderson. Where's Anderson? There he is, getting his eighth cup of coffee. There, there he is. And who? What? Oh, Lawrence. Hey, you just appeared from nowhere. Hi, Lawrence. How are you? Welcome. And y'all welcome those two gentlemen there. Did I miss a visitor, Karen? Amanda Parrish is here. Hi, Amanda. Wave. She's in the back there. See y'all wave. Say hi to them later. All right. That's about it, Rupe. Just a little story for you. All right. Christmas story. It's Christmas. Well, well, well it's not. As uh, they say on Facebook sometimes, after you hear this one, don't unfriend me. <laughs> so when Mozart passed away, mm -hmm. yeah, 
Rupert Charty. Oh, yeah. He was buried in the church courtyard. Well, a couple of days after he was buried, the town drunk stumbles by, and he hears a horrible noise coming from the cemetery. He gets terrified, and he runs and gets the priest from the church. He said, you got, you got to come out of here and hear this. So they run out to where uh, Beethoven was buried, and they hear a horrible musical noise coming from the graveyard area. They couldn't figure out what it was. So the priest was terrified. He said, let's go get the town magistrate and see if he can figure this out. They run and get the town magistrate. He comes in, and he puts his ear to the grave. He goes, oh, my gosh, that is rather peculiar. And he hears a horrible musical noise. He, said, he listens closer. I don't know what it is. Listens, and then he realizes it's music coming from the grave. But it's a horrible kind of sound. By then, all the townspeople are now gathered around the, the uh, cemetery realizing what's going on. So he listens closer, and he goes, I think I know what that is. He goes, that is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony being played backwards. <laughs> he goes, so he listens closer. There's the Eighth Symphony, and it's being played backwards too. So he listens more. The Seventh Symphony is being played backwards. And the Sixth, and the Fifth, and the Fourth, and he goes, aha, townspeople, I know what this is. This is Beethoven decomposing. Don't unfriend me. That's a good one. Happy Hey, I got the uh, treats for next month's sheet si uh, sign up going around. Make sure if you don't sign up for anything, sign up for January, <laughs> and we'll we'll pass it around again if y'all would be so kind. So pass that around, please. Good luck, Rupert. Thank you. Decomposing one. Good morning, church family. Good to see y'all this morning. Are you ready for Christmas? All right. Got, all, got everything all bought up. Amazon's already made 15 deliveries to the house. Got the lights finally burning. All the Christmas decorations are put out. Right? Christmas trees in every room. Candles are lit. Now, now we're ready for the kids to come home, right? <laughs> well, this morning, um, I know we're not going to have Sunday school for two weeks. I know, I know. But that's the way the calendar falls this year. With New Year's Day running afterwards. And, but um, we're lighthearted this morning. We're just talking about Christmas traditions. You know, we've talked about... Um, uh, the birth of, of John the Baptist and uh, his parents, and we've talked about the birth of Jesus Christ, and we took a, a tour through the through through the fields of, of uh, with the shepherds out in the field, and we've seen the wise men last week, and uh, Christmas goes on and on. But this morning I wanted to talk about a little bit about Christmas traditions and those men that made the devotion the other this last time, I'm going to be robbing some of that, uh, some of that information so you might, the people from men's breakfast over at Petty's, some of this might be a little bit uh, repetitive, but bear with me. There's a lot of people that hadn't heard some of the tra Christmas traditions. What are your traditions? What are some of your Christmas traditions? Well, I don't have any traditions. That's the thought that goes around. Most likely, but do you come home on after 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 the tree ceremony or wherever that's going to be? Maybe it's going to be at your house. Maybe it's going to be at some of the kids or wherever. Sometimes we just sit around and we watch television. Sometimes we just watch a good football game. Sometimes we just have a big dinner. I want you to know whatever it is that you've been doing it. That becomes your Christmas traditions. And as you live that tradition, you believe it or not, the people that are in that room with you, they look forward to that tradition. And you can think back on the things that you've done, and you say, well, I really don't have that. The people that's in your presence, they love being there, 
because that becomes part of their traditions. And they don't have to do it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tradition, uh, you know, and we'll look at some of the meals that people cook. So what are some of the traditions here? Somebody help me out here, get, get a volunteer. What are some of your traditions? Oh, we got folks. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh. Uh, he built uh, Snoopy Claus and all the characters in big sizes to Snoopy's on the roof. And, uh, you know, it says good, Lucy says good grief, it's Snoopy Claus. But anyway, we put that up for years. And then it went to his son, and his son put it up. Mm -hmm. And now his. Grandson and yeah. great grandchildren are enjoying it. They put it up every year, so this has been going on for a long see there, time. See there, what you started. Look, look yeah. there. That's great, great. What over here? Traditions. What kind of Christmas traditions you got, Judy? I'll share something. Years ago, when I saw this little poem that said, "What can I give him, poor as I am, if I were a shepherd?" I'd bring him a lamb. If I were a wise man, I'd do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give him my heart. When I saw that poem, I decided to take a crystal heart that I had, and I put it in a little black velvet box and wrapped it with red bow around it, and I started putting that box first, after sharing that poem with the family, under the tree. That's the first gift that goes under the tree. And when all the other presents are gone, that's the one that's still there. And we talk about that. Oh, mm -hmm. oh that's good. Growing, growing up, you remember how delightful it was to be your Christmas morning? Huh? And then as you grew up and married and moved away, and then to watch your kids enjoy the same. We're going to talk about some of those gifts that kids, some of the gifts maybe you receive. You know, in the 50s, I, I can remember, it used to be a real joy to get a fruit wrapped in tissue paper. Do you remember that when we used to do that? An orange or apple, it would be stuffed in your stocking. Something simple as a bag of pecans and walnuts. In the, You know, that it seemed like things were a lot simpler but the things that you still remember the most were some of the simplest things that we were given. All right. Traditions around, around the country. I, I couldn't help but around the world. Well, excuse me, Janet. <laughs> you got my glasses by the chance. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me just a second. Here you go. Oh, you got got good ones. I don't know. I'm stuck in my pocket now. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> oh, those are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Goat, forty-two foot high, set out in the in the in the town square, the capital of the city, twenty-seven feet wide, and people come from near and far to see them set this up. This is their Christmas. This is a celebration that they've got, where they have the where we have the candle lightings, they have the lighting of the Gava. Christmas, Christmas in Sweden, sing carols around it. In the Philippines, everything about making a duplicate of the Star of Bethlehem, whirling, twirling, spacious stars, flags that fly at night, things that were made out of fire and light to light the, the surroundings up. Thousands of spinning lights in each one of these huge things that are set up in different towns, always a display at night. 
How about Japan? 1% of the population is Christian. But yet, their Christmas deal centers around the meal at KFC. They have so many orders that it takes all the way from the last two months of the year to make reservations to put your order in so that you won't have a two-hour wait to get KFC. Not a, tr a tradition there. I think we can probably stay at home and get KFC, can't we? <laughs> anyway, what else we got, Janet? Oh, yeah, I love this one. This one is, is from Iceland. 13 days of Christmas celebrated and visited by the country, by the kids, by 13 lads. 13 lads. And at the end of the 13th day, they have... They put their shoes in the window in hopes that one of the lads will bring them a treat. Now, if you've been bad this year, the tradition holds, if you've had a bad year, if you're a bad child and you didn't turn in a good report, these will be filled with rotten potatoes. <laughs> rotten potatoes. And you just thought getting a, a lump of coal was bad here in, the, here in our country, huh? Finland, centered around always about a, a bowl of porridge, a bowl of porridge with uh, cinnamon, milk, butter, and inside that porridge, their meal is to scatter in a, a few almonds, and the person that gets the almond in the porridge is the special blessing one. They get a special blessing at that time. What do you think? <laughs> Ham, turkey, or bowl of por porridge. <laughs> Very popular. How about down under? New Zealand. New Zealand, of course, got a different climate. The Christmas in New Zealand is always centered around outdoor activities. It's a cookout. It's a it's a uh, a grill. It's a, a a meal on the barbie. They. Um, the trees there, they call them the pokotur, which breaks into red flowers, and this becomes their Christmas trees because that is native, and they're scattered around the country, and maybe you might, they, in that part of the country, you maybe you have one in your yard, so that becomes your Christmas tree. What's that name again? Pokotur. No, we didn't, did Janet? <laughs> Denmark. Tradition. You set your Christmas tree up in the, in the living room, and then there's a festive dancing around the Christmas tree. It's recognized right before the solstice, so around the 21st of December. That's their Christmas day. It's uh, also for the kids, a superstition of what they call the nicer, nizzer, N-I-S-S-E-R, what with the nisser. And how the nisser will recognize your behavior for the past year. Oh, kids wait up. <laughs> Martinique in the islands, centered around festivities and what they call Yamshi, it's a meal served with, uh, with pork and salted meat. Sound like a stew, doesn't it? Norway. Begins on December the 3rd, and they call it the Yulban. Celebrated on December 23rd. Their meal that they have in that day for lunch, for the Christmas dinner will be hot rice pudding with gingerbread and a lot of family time. You see any of these celebrations bringing in Christ yet? All right, you get the picture. In Ireland, every window will be draped with candles all over the, all over the area. Big, and the meal will be goose and potatoes. That's what's in. Barbados. Festive, festive, 
but always with a ham cooked with pineapple and a, a, a delicacy locally they call jug jug. Yep. Pigeon peas, herbs, salted meat, and guinea corn. Barbados. Barbados. Poland. Opatek, where Christmas is recognized really mainly at night after the stars come out, where they go out and eat unleavened wafers eaten after dark for the stargazers looking for the star of Bethlehem. It reminds them of all the stars. How about one down in the Netherlands? Kind of close to us. This gentleman is called Sinterklaas. He's Dutch, Dutch name for Santa Claus. He always comes with a long beard and a red cape and red mittens. Hmm? I know, I know, we must have messed up on that one, Jen. Center Claus, anyway. <laughs> Portugal and Brazil. Festivities begin at 10 o'clock sharp at night. 10 o'clock. Followed by gifts from the family and then mass. Fireworks on the city square. And the claim to fame is everybody sleeps late the next morning. <laughs> Austria celebrates Christmas on December 6th. Kids are visited by Krampus, Krampus, C-R-A-M-P-A-S, Krampus. Krampus asks that the kids put out, make a list of all of their good deeds and what they have done bad for the year. And Krampus will take care of the root. If bad deeds, bad things can happen. Kind of scary, isn't it? Austria, uh, no, um, Austria. Ukraine. In the Ukraine, what we take for granted to realize that 49% of the country is Christian. Festive fun, caroling in the town, and what they call yetka. Now, the yetka is after they've had their ceremony, and it's time for the evening dinner. The father or the leader of the family will take a spoonful of mush. I know I, I know I know it. I found found this on Facebook, so it had to be true. <laughs> Yetka, and if he pitches the up and it sticks on the ceiling, that means that it will be a good harvest that that spring. <laughs> and so we're already waiting for Yetka to set in so that you would predict and you will know what kind of year is coming. How is that for a tradition? Messy. Messy. <laughs> Switzerland centered around the advent candle calendar. Oh, excuse me, Mexico. You always see these parades of people. The, what are the parades that we see in, in Mexican countries or really the celebration and the reenactment of the journey between Mary, with Mary and Joseph. And that's what they're trying to, even though they get the, 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 the ceremony gets a little, a little wandering and you wonder what, what, where, where the parade is going, but that's really the essence of, of what they're trying to demonstrate. Switzerland, the advent, moving toward our hope, Dreams for the, for the, and everything winding up to the Advent calendar or the Advent day for the birth of Christ. And there's always gifts for the children at the end. El Salvador, festive fireworks on the 24th and the 25th. Everybody looks forward to the, to the showing in town and local squares for, uh, for the firework display. So how, Judy, thank you, thank you. 
How's your Christmas tradition compared bearing out to other countries' traditions? See? There's nothing wrong with a good football game and television, a good meal. To Betty Evans? Yeah, we're going to flip mashed potatoes to the ceiling. <laughs> mashed potatoes on the ceiling. Oh. And if they stick, what happens? Six more weeks. Six more weeks of them. <laughs> but, but you always remember Christmas morning maybe yourself, being in the circle, sitting around the tree and receiving where Santa Claus has brought you gifts. And that was such a delight. But do you remember seeing your kids receive their special Christmas gifts and the joy that you have on your face and the comfort that you feel from being? So I wanted to walk you through down memory lane on some of the things from, from uh different decades about what was going on with toys because we always remember those toys toys for that maybe you had maybe toys you bought for your children in 1950s there was ribbon candy in 1951 do you remember hard candy like this Every Christmas had hard candy. There was a bag of it for every family. And I tell you what, it just... And then in, in uh, 53 and 54, there was a man by the name of... Um, well, what was his name? Um, let me get, set my Bible. Got too many things here going on. No, he's not from the Bible. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Are you doing that? The Lindell Candy Company sells this. Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. Yeah. Homemade. Yeah, they do. Homemade. They make it. There was a, uh, in the early 50s, there was a band by the name of Bob Keyshaw. Do y'all remember Bob Keyshaw? <laughs> Captain Kangaroo. Wake up, Grandfather Clock. Wake up. And and, Mr. and Mr. Green Jeans was running the outsides, and he promoted a dip in 53, 54 that every kid had to have, and that product was Play-Doh. Everybody had to have Play-Doh because, you see, Captain Kangaroo promoted it on television, and so after every Christmas tree, kids were delighted to get Play-Doh. And still to this day, but still, that was the beginning all brought on by the Christmas season. What else we got, Janet? How many Lincoln Logs did you pick up? Yeah, the kids. And not to be outdone by the next one, Tinker Toys, you remember? Am I jogging anybody's memory here with the kids or maybe yourself? And then what do we have, Janet? In 1958, what do we call this? Hula Hoops. Did you have one? 42-inch hoop made out of pure plastic. Oh, man, we, this, I think this led the country right into uh, learning how to twist. We need that again to slim us down. Slim us down. You think so? I don't know. Right in about the same time. See what else we got. How about this one? The cycle... This product was marketed as called the, who, who remembers? David, do you remember? Where is David in here? Oh, I guess he's gone. It was called the Psycho Sheen Company. Psycho Sheen brought this product out. It was a billiards company, and it went nowhere. The toy manufacturers got hold of it and put it in there where you would ask it a question, you know, and then you could shake it up, and, you, and so you'd have, well, do you think that she really likes me? And the ball would ask me that. later. Yeah. Or, <laughs> absolutely. 
whatever. So you could ask the ball, the magic, the eight ball. How about me, Mr. Potato Head and Mrs. Potato Head the next year? How about uh, called matchbox cars? And you know why matchbox cars, I was reading you this, was so successful because after the Christmas holidays, the teacher, these were very small toys, but they let kids at school, you could take your matchbox cars to school because they fit in your cigar box. You remember your, where do all those cigar boxes come from, from school? You ever think about that? You used to have a cigar box in every desk. Hmm. 1950s. 1959, Barbie, oh man, and I'll tell you what, you'll see Barbie again and again and again, Barbie, and do you remember having aluminum Christmas trees, <laughs> aluminum Christmas trees, and you know, and then the following year, well, we had a color wheel that made the, 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 the shine on the Christmas tree. Here it is, color wheel over there. Yeah, make it red, make it green. How many people still have an aluminum Christmas tree? Look at there, there's a couple. <laughs> 1950s. 1954, Christmas time. Everybody was watching Bean Crosby and Danny Kaye in White Christmas. 1957, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Those things still coming up, still being played on television, and it's amazing how we enjoy those old movies from the past. How about 1960s, Janet? You could have a, a yo-yo, but something, but you know what? It better be a Duncan yo-yo. Came out around Christmas. Everybody's got to have a Duncan yo-yo. Barbie again in the 60s. In the 60s, uh, Barbie. Uh, and she had her sister was sold with her in the early 60s. And do you remember that daughter, the, the, the sister's name? Skipper. Barbie and Skipper. Yeah, yeah. What else, Janet? Oh, yeah, Chatty Cathy. See how they, all, all the dolls that we've got. How about a Easy Bake? How did what you make the make the oven run with? A, a light bulb, wasn't it? Easy bake. And before there was Elf on the Shelf in the sixties, they sold something called Christmas Pixies. The same deal, Christmas Pixies. You would set the pixie up on the mantle in the closet, one thing or another. And the object was that you find that where that elf is, or called Pixie's Bank, and you just thought it was something new, didn't you? Sixties. The world was boys centered around sports because you had 61, you remember 61 and 61? What does that mean? 61 home runs, Mantle and Maris, See, anything to do with sports. You had the Fosbury flop, you had um, Peggy, the skating champion, what was her? Pay, pay. Everything was centered around that. To bring uh, nothing for the 1970s when everything turned to Nerf. You got Nerf, you got Nerf balls, you got Nerf bullets, you got Nerf, whatever it is, Nerf trucks. made a, Everything made out of Nerf seemed like. How about a speak, uh, oh yeah, a computer, itch a sketch. Your first monitor. <laughs> How about a big wheel for kids, my boys? I want you to know I was looking at Gibson's and Spartan Atlantic. This this little thing will cost you fifteen eighty eight. Fifteen dollars eighty eight cents to buy. Yeah, yeah, about four hours put it together. Yeah, yeah. But it's amazing how things. How about Cabbage Patch dolls? And did you know there were over three million adoption papers filled out by the manufacturer because you see, you didn't buy a cabbage patch doll. You waited three hours in line to adopt one and they told you which one you're gonna get 
you filled out the paper and they already had it named. Got to have, yeah, right, colorize it. Yep, 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 yep. Followed up by what? Care bears. Care bears. Same philosophy. This time you got seven or eight colors of bears. And the kids, you know, I've got the green one, but I still need the red one. <laughs> yeah, they had names too. Yeah. How about the Rubik's Cube, 1980? Yeah, how long did it take you to work it out? I'm still working on it. Yeah, 70s, Star Wars everything, right? Star Wars figures, Star Wars this, star, helmets, caps, whatever it is. Star Wars. Transformers. Kind of what, what you take a robot and you turn it around and it transforms into whatever you want it to be, into a truck, a pickup, or whatever. Beanie Babies, beginning of the 80s, or the 90s maybe. Beanie Babies, Nintendo. Everybody had to have one, had to have a PlayStation. Uh -huh. Ninja Turtles. I can't believe we were kids with Ninja Mutant Ninja, Mutant Ninja Turtles. Big hit. My favorite Christmas traditions. Everyone has to set out milk and cookies at the fireplace so that Santa Claus will have something to eat when he comes down. Well, what if you didn't have a chimney? Oh, that's all right. We leave it by the door, wherever we need to. Tr Christmas traditions. Is that all the pictures you got? Yeah. But I want you to know that as you think about Christmas, where are all those toys now? <laughs> they have come, they have gone, they have served their usefulness, and they're gone. And some people stop and remember, it's amazing that if they remembered Luke 2 as well as they remember Christmas gifts. And Jesus, to make a long story short this morning, Christmas, Christmas, Janet, is not the, the presence, is not, is not the presence. It's not in, his, in the presence, but it's in his presence. Our Lord and Savior, because you see there's not a, we don't get the same buzz in today's world as the secular Santa Claus. There'll be things that'll be set up. There'll be things that said. There'll be Christmas everywhere, but no one really pushes the birth of Christ unless you see it right here at the church. Seems like the whole world has put the birth of Christ and in, in the secular world and, and what you'll see in the marketplace for more and more Santa. More and more gifts, more and more toys. They'd rather opt for Santa Claus than the birth of the Christ child. And we need to remember what Christmas is all really all about. And when we come with our family, and you have the kids sitting around the Christmas tree, do not be afraid, because I guarantee you they're going to love it. Do not be afraid to bring up the birth of Christ. Let those kids sit on your lap, Grandpa. You read them Luke 2, and you tell them about the Christmas story and what it's really all about. That's what they'll remember long past all of the gifts and before all the Rubik's Cubes and the Magic 8 Balls and the things that they think about, they'll remember you and what you told them about the Christ child.
people seem to say there's more, we want to see more Christmas shows, more entertainment. We want to go on more vacations. But the nativity story is not the buzz that they want to see. It's a shame. People claim that this is a time for family time, Christmas time. You can have family time, but don't forget this is Christ time. It's the birth of a Christ child. And as we all the presents are stacked up and all the congregation and all the drinks and celebration and the things that we celebrate and enjoy, remember the simplicity of the true Christmas story. Our Lord came here. Can you imagine around the world all these traditions are celebrated to gain, to, to blend in with the secular world, but all the time telling them and reminding them themselves that there's something special, that this is the birth of the Christ. Every calendar changed, balls number, everything came into back to a different realm. Otherwise, this year would be something like 5,500 and something the year. Instead, this is 2023 because everyone would recognize the, the stake in the ground, the, the new age, the birth of the Christ. Things change. Our Lord came, and he came for me and you. And we need to remember that difference, that change. So as Christmas approaches, you have a wonderful time, and you remember your Christmas traditions. Enjoy them. Enjoy, but also don't, don't step back when that chance comes and that opportunity when you can tell the kids about the Christ child. Okay? Let's close in a word of prayer. Precious Father, thank you for reminding us, Father, that you are the reason for the season, that everything revolves around you, and that all that the glitter and gold things that shine that, Father, as they all fade away, but your presence remains with us eternal, Father, and that you are the reason that we celebrate. And, Father, we come to you remembering that birth date and be with us, Father. Help us and our families also in everything we do and say that we glorify you. Have a blessed m m Christmas. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rip. Joy is going to come up now and... Thank you. Hi. Hey. I had to find it. Good morning. Okay. Praises. Omer is here, and he got a really good report. Amen. He's going to start that second round of chemo on the 28th. So we we'll keep praying for you, and they'll keep working. Uh, Matt Cox had an eye surgery this week. It went well, but he's having uh, some blurred vision, and he's due to go out of town this week. So Linda asked that we pray that his vision clear up a little bit. Uh, he's going to have he's scheduled to have the other eye done the 27th. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Tom Haygood is doing be better, but still has a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Yeah. Did could y'all hear her? Okay. He just has to lay. Yeah. So if you would call Judy or or call Tom, just so that, that he wants visitors because he's lonesome and he's bored, but we don't need everybody going right at the same time. We went over Friday. Thursday and caught him asleep so uh, he is on pain meds Jim Foy uh, Jim Foy I talked to Barbara yesterday he's still on the ventilator they have him sedated um, he has kidney failure he has pneumonia 
he did have a stroke. However, this morning, Janet got a text from Barbara that said there's hope, there's brain activity. Um, they, I don't remember the whole thing, and I can't get to Do you want to read it right quick? And then Judy told me this morning that Evelyn Ammons called her this morning, and Evelyn and Joyce Story, who is the hospice nurse out here, was on their way over to the hospital. So I think we're getting mixed news, but they definitely need our prayers. I'll let Janet read that. I asked her for an update to share. She said, today we have some hope. No heart attack. The stroke is very minor. There is brain activity. They will try to see if they can take the breathing tube out to see how he tolerates that, so keep praying. Okay. And this was, he had a, a surgery Thursday morning to remove a salivary gland, went home, everything's going good, and then he woke up and couldn't move. Um, okay. We need to keep Ann Hamilton in our prayers as she struggles on some days. Jerry, do we have a date yet? Thursday at 10.30, Jerry will have bladder cancer surgery. So we need to keep him in our prayers this week. That's not fun, close to Christmas. Uh, Carol Cook has been moved to Providence Park in Tyler for rehab, so she's doing somewhat better. Uh, Marsha Anderson is due to have hip surgery later this month, and I'm sorry, I don't know when it is. Does anyone know when it's scheduled for? Okay. Uh, and Ann Lee's grandson has been in hospital with a very serious stomach virus. Is there anybody that I missed? Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts as always. Um, you're so good to us with so many blessings. The biggest blessing that you've given us comes at this season of the year with the birth of your son. We pray that we'll remember that as we go through this Christmas season. We pray for safety as everyone travels to be with family during these holiday seasons. But mostly we pray for those who are having surgery, have had surgery, and are dealing with other health issues, that you will just wrap those families and those people in your arms and pull them up on your lap and just give them a hug, Lord. Let them know you're right there with them. We just pray that as that you'll go with us this week. Help us to be the people you need us to be, to say what you need us to say, to glorify your kingdom. We ask these things in thy name. Amen.